Do you ever get to that point with your Sims 3 legacy save files where you just don't know where to go next? I found myself in that position multiple times and sometimes the overwhelm that I get from the number of potential choices that I could make is enough to make me quit playing the game entirely. Now, I've got a little bit sick and tired of this really toxic trait of mine, I guess. Toxic trait, cycle, question mark. So I've went and made a big old Google Doc uh, that has been helping me to avoid this in my newest legacy save. And today I'm gonna walk you through it. The spreadsheet I've created is available for you to download and customize and use with your own legacy saves. It's gonna be available in the description down below. So go check it out. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so after you've downloaded and made an editable copy of this Google Doc, the first thing that you're gonna be greeted with is the family tracking tab. So you'll notice off the bat that this spreadsheet generally kind of smashes the story slash memory keeping aspect of The Sims with the collectible and kind of completionist side of the game, I suppose. I for one know that I fall more onto one side of that coin in terms of my preferred play style. And so I think it's actually really good to be reminded of the other one from time to time to make sure that we're kind of keeping our gameplay fresh and exciting for ourselves. But the beauty of this document is is really that you can kind of take what you want and leave what you don't. The purpose of it is to just make clear everything that we have in our games so that then in those moments when we don't quite know what we want to play, we literally have a big old list that's going to tell us exactly what we could do so that we're shortening that decision fatigue cycle and making sure that we can just get on with playing rather than thinking about what we're going to play. Okay, so each of these pages should be fairly self-explanatory, but I'll go through them all individually anyway. So as I said, the first page that you're going to come across is the family tracking sheet. And this is basically where you're going to keep chat keep traps, oh my god, keep tabs on every family member of your legacy. So again, if you're kind of into story stuff, it has a big old space for notes just here. But also I like to kind of think about things in the future that I might want my Sims to explore and do. And so having a place to just kind of note that down as I go is gonna be really helpful. As for a couple of other little notes about this page in particular, the position column here, what I had in mind for this one is you can kind of keep track of what position your family member is in relation to the wider family structure. So for example, when you start your legacy challenge, you're gonna have your founder. So that's what I would put right in there. And then your founder is gonna have children because you know, you need to keep that legacy going. So the first child might be designated as the heir, whereas the second child might be designated as the spare, maybe potentially, or you could also put pets in here and sort of stuff like that. So that's kind of what I intended for that column, but also use it however you want. And that's the case with this entire thing. Like if you don't like something, take it out. If you wanna add a stuff, absolutely do that. As for hobbies as well, I've kind of, as you'll see, I've missed out skills from in here. And that's because I kind of wanted to, I guess, conglomerate actual skills and hidden skills. As you'll see, we've got the tabs for them both down here, but it's, you know, it's the skills that your Sims invest a lot of time into and that maybe make them money, but also stuff that they just kind of do for fun on the side when they're just wanting to hang out kind of a thing. Okay, so the rest of these pages are kind of much of a muchness. For each of them, I went through the wiki and I pulled out, you know, every career, every skill, most of the hidden skills, but I'll circle back around to that in a second, all of the careers and also every single, I believe this is every single collectible, but I could be missing some stuff. So if I have, please let me know and I will update this document as soon as I can. But yeah, so each of the lifetime wishes, skills, etc., are all going to be organized by pack. So you have all of your base game ones, all of your, you know, world adventures, like late night, etc. And again, so if you don't have one of these packs, then literally what you do is you just highlight and delete, you know? So that's that. And also say you maybe get the pack later down the line, you could just kind of copy and paste it. So we'll do this and then we'll kind of like tuck it away down here. So that then maybe you get it again one day in the future and you want to pop it back in down the line sort of a thing, but we'll just get rid of that for now. And also I've kind of made a couple of little notes down the side for quite a few of these things. It's again, stuff that I've got from the wiki. So 
absolute credit to everybody who made those fantastic pages. But it's sort of like uh, for the, let's see, culinary librarian one. So this is a bug that I noticed in my own game where so basically the lifetime wish gets auto completed after a certain amount of time as you kind of progress up the skill because your sim just automatically learns the minimum required number of recipes, which I think is the equivalent of the number of recipes in the base game. So kind of little notes like that, but also you can just kind of add in your own notes as you play. So say you learn a tip about how to become a chess legend. I don't know, I'm just taking an example here. You could kind of put a couple of notes in there in case you swing back round to this lifetime wish later in your legacy, for example. Now the possessing sims columns is always gonna be the sims that have that lifetime wish, that skill, that career, etc. But yeah, so there's every single lifetime wish in here. There's every single skill. So for example, even the store ones actually. So I, for example, don't have the violin in my game. So I'm just gonna kind of delete that row just there so that then that all syncs up properly but i'll pop it back in for now so that's what i would do and i am actually going to show you my completed sheet in a little minute so we're gonna get that um and then the hidden skills the little note that i made i didn't include all the toddler and child skills just because they were kind of like duplicates of like child cooking child homework or, or whatever it is and there's a couple of really minor ones that i also didn't include and also what is bug eating bug eating might be removed in the final one i'm not sure and then we also have all the careers i've highlighted a couple it's the self-employed professions and then also the part-time ones all of the self-employed professions require ambitions and then yeah the last one is collections so it's literally all of the gems all of the metals all of the fish all of the butterflies beetles but yeah okay so now i've given you the very long overview of this document i'm gonna actually hop into my one and show you exactly how i've been filling it out so far okay so now this is the document that I've been completing for my own legacy which I've actually been featuring in quite a few videos recently because I've just been enjoying playing them so much but I've definitely got to the point now that we actually have a couple of extra sims in the house where I'm a bit like ah what do I do especially because these two sims here are both fairies and I did not realize that fairies live for five times as long as normal sims so I'm gonna have a lot of time with them and I need to figure out how to use it so okay as we'll see generation one we'll just use rose as a little example here We've got her name, what position she's in, all of her traits, her lifetime wish, and I also added in the fact that she has now completed it, just there. She's got her hobby, uh, career rather, and then her hobbies. And you're gonna notice that Oriole's uh, hobbies section is actually empty at the moment. And that's because I've kind of been using her as a bit of a child rearing, unpaid laborer <laughs> i don't know if i can actually use the right word <laughs> um on youtube but yeah so that's something that i'm gonna need to address but then yeah as for sort of like other little notes um because rose has the i believe it's either the proper or the diva trait she just always automatically changes into her formal wear so she'll be like riding a horse dead ass in like a formal dress heels and her diamonds so she's an absolute slay queen for that and i love her and so yeah like again i've got some potential plans in here i'm still sort of working through this myself at the moment and this is just kind of a bit of an example of what you could do with this document but yeah so like i want to have rose and oriel go and get married in france so yeah then as we go down to oriel you'll see that she's got i was kind of thinking about like what hobbies she has and honestly i've been a bit bad and i've not even developed any skills for her really yet so this box and um, like this empty box here kind of highlighted to me like oh i need to get on to actually making her a well-rounded sim but then i used her sort of notes section slightly differently where i actually copied out her family bio just there um or actually i believe that's her individual sim bio and then that's kind of an abridged version of the family bio with her sister because she did originally live with her sister and then you know i moved her in etc so i actually took her out of her career when she moved into the house because i was like i don't want you to be a criminal and now i've realized being a little criminal is actually essential to your being so so we'll put that back and then we'll notice little Holly. She's only got two traits and that's because she's still a toddler at the moment. So because she was born in winter, like I want to, A, that's why I named her Holly. Um, but I also want her to kind of explore lots of the more active hidden skills because I always forget about them in my game. And so that is why having this entire list of objects 
that relate to hidden skills is actually really cool. But yeah, so that is the main family tracking tab for my current Sims 3 legacy household. Um, but I've literally only made a few minor adjustments to the rest of the document. You're gonna notice that now a couple of these are actually highlighted in a different color, which wasn't the case in the regular document. And I've actually highlighted these because my other legacy household that I've been playing for over a year, um, I've actually had Sims have these lifetime wishes and especially careers as well. Um, and so I'm kind of making sure that I'm keeping those known to myself so that then I don't again fall into that trap of just what do I want to play? I'm gonna play the familiar thing that I've done before potentially. And a lot of these, to be honest, I think are things that you'll more fill out towards the end of a Sims life because you know you don't know for example the highest level that they're going to have got to when they're a young adult kind of a thing versus when they're an elder so yeah just something to maybe check in with not all the time like i wouldn't say that you need to fill out this document after every single play session um but you know every couple when you feel like your household is shifting a little bit i think is when this document is gonna sort of shine but yeah guys so truly this list has really opened my eyes to all the potential things that i could be getting up to in my game now i've been mentioning throughout this video that i've been modeling my completion of this document around my current legacy household so if you want to stick around and you want to see a little bit more about what they've been getting up to check the video on the screen just now but other than that guys thanks so much for watching and i'll see you again soon